What you guys got another video here for you the pc fans keep spinning after you shut down that is the problem we're taking a look at today as you can see these fans are spinning on my computer the rgb lights are still on now we're not just talking about rgb lights staying on we're talking about the actual fans are spinning inside of this computer case and so is the cpu fan that's what we're talking about here so let me just quickly show you here the monitors have gone off but the PC stays on and the fans spin. So this is a problem that we're going to try to fix today. Now, this happens a lot to Intel-based uh, systems, I see. And uh, I've seen this quite a bit over the years. So I'm going to show you some of the things you can do to try to rectify this. Let me just show you inside here to show you the fans are actually spinning as well. I'll try and get the uh, CPU fan here. You can see that's still spinning there as well. And this is pretty common. Let's just go ahead and try to fix this issue. Now, the way you can power this down is by just holding the power button on the case here to uh, power it off if it's not switching off itself. And this way, this will power it off. But it's not really advisable to keep doing that for long periods because you can end up damaging your hardware. So what we'll do here is we'll just power it off for now, and I'll show you how to fix it next time we boot the system up. So let's go ahead and try to fix and resolve this issue. So we're at the desktop now, and what we're going to do first off is we're going to go to our power settings. So go to the start button here, right click, and go to run, and type out this inside the run box here. We're going to type control.exe space, then power, cfg, then dot cpl, and then comma, comma, free. And that's what we're going to do here and then push OK or enter on the keyboard. And this will open up our power box here. So you can see power options. Inside here, we're going to be taking a look at PCI Express. So in the PCI Express section, which is down a little bit further, let me just close that off there and go to PCI Express. And what we're going to do is turn that off. So go into here and you should see link state power management. You should see power management saving, and we're going to turn this off and apply this an OK. So just apply an OK, and you can restart your PC. Next up, what we're going to do is go back to the run box by right clicking on the start button and clicking on run and type power CFG dot CPL and then click OK. And this will take you to this window here. Once we get inside here, what we're going to do is go to choose what the power button do and click on this one. And what we need to do here is click on change settings that are currently unavailable. We're going to click on uh, that there. So let's go ahead and click on this. So you should see here now the file startup. If you don't see that, then I'll show you how to get it. But if you can, then disable it. Also, make sure the shutdown is in when I press the power button is set to shutdown. So inside here where it says shutdown settings, you should see startup, just disable it. If you don't, you can type reg edit in the search box here and open up the registry editor. Once you're inside here, we're going to navigate to this location here. H key local machine, then system, hit the drop down arrow here and go to current control set, then control and open this up here. And then we're going to go down to session manager so you should see that in the list here so click on session manager and open this up there we go inside here we're going to be looking for power click on power now on the right hand pane here we need to navigate over to here and we're going to go down till we find our hyper boot enabled so look for hyper boot enabled it should be in that list somewhere there there we go. There it is. And it's set to one. And if you want to disable this, then you need to put this to zero. And this is your fast startup. So double click on this one. A little box will pop up here and just change the value to zero. And this will disable the fast startup. Now, of course, if this doesn't fix it, you can always reverse this back if you want to at a later date. Now, if you don't want to mess around inside the uh, registry here and you do have Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro and above, you can use the group policy editor. So type GP edit in the search box and open up the local group policy editor. Go to computer configuration 
administrative templates click on system open this up and then go down all the way down here until we find uh, shutdown click on shutdown here and on the right hand pane you should see require use of fast startup inside here you can disable the fast startup by using this method here if you don't want to mess around inside the registry you can use this method here but i've got it set in the registry so i'm not going to bother using this here but if you do want to use it that's how you can get to this location you can enable or disable here depending on what you're trying to do just read the information on the screen and you should be good to go the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our command prompt because we need to disable hibernation so we're going to turn off hibernation so let's go down to the search box here and type cmd in the search box run this as administrator and this should open up the command prompt box here and then what we're going to do here is type out this command here power cfg and then space dash and then we're going to do h and then space off and then push enter and that will turn off hibernation so i'm going to close out the box now we don't need this now so that's hibernation off and we're going to try another thing here as well so go to the search box here and what we're going to do is type out here system information or system and you can just click on system information here look for the motherboard uh, make and also look for the motherboard product number here you can see this is gigabyte uh, z490 vision, vision d here so what we're going to do is do a search for that and you can also see it is an intel processor and this is a pretty common issue for intel processors so we're going to go to the support tab here and choose our operating system inside here we're going to go down to our chipset uh, area here so chipset drivers look for your chipset drivers here and you're looking for the intel management engine firmware and you want to make sure you download this this you want to get the latest version so inside there there'll be a bunch of files and they're not executable files you will need to use a different method for installing this onto the system but this resolves a lot of the issues that you might be having check the version uh, here and also check the date of the release of this you can right click and go to device manager and cross reference this with the driver that you have installed on your system and this will be down in the uh, system device here so click on system device and what you're looking for is the intel management engine interface here right click on here and if you do an update on this it's not going to update uh, it doesn't update very well from there but you can see if we look at the driver itself it tells us the date and the version you can see it's outdated by quite a bit this is the 2019 version and the one on there is 2021 so this can fix a lot of problems if you do an update it says the best drivers for your device are already installed and that's simply not the case that's because windows decides on what's best drivers for your system and they're using old outdated drivers so i've got this unpacked now and it's in a folder so if you go inside here you'll see a bunch of files and there's no executable files inside here you see you can't just click on them and install them it doesn't work that way but i'll show you how to install them it's pretty straightforward and easy to do so let me click on this and you see nothing comes up here for installation so we'll go back and uh, we're going to go back to our device manager and install it the proper way so let's go back over to there and we'll get this installed I'm just going to quickly open up device manager by right clicking on the start button and hit device manager here we go so we'll go back to the location where we was just now the system devices and look for the Intel uh, management engine interface right click on here and click on update and browse your computer and navigate to that installation folder that you downloaded or the folder whatever it's called and where you stored it on your PC and click OK and then click next and it will then install those drives successfully if they're outdated and if we go back and right click on this now and go to properties and then driver information here you'll see that it has updated that driver and give us the latest version so that's how we can resolve that issue and that does resolve a lot of these problems so hopefully that has 
resolved your issue, you can restart your PC and hopefully it shuts down normally after you've done all of these steps. Now, if you're still having issues, you may want to uh, do a fresh clean install of Windows to make sure that there isn't some sort of bug with Windows. And again, you can always update your BIOS if the BIOS is way outdated and that sometimes resolves the issue as well. Anyway, that's about it from me. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Your name is rolling up on the screen and I'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.